Hello and welcome to Film Pro Productivity and Success, the podcast that helps film professionals and other creative people to live a more focused, effective and happy life. My name is Carter Ferguson and this is episode 55, Why Self-Isolation is a Productivity Gift. And we're back, yes, we are back with a special in between episode, and it's uh, an off-the-cuff episode, that is, it's an unscripted episode. That said, I have written myself a few notes on the computer before I started this, in case I talk absolute nonsense. And today's topic is reflected in the title, Why Self-Isolation Is, or Could Be Certainly, a Productivity Gift. Now, I'm going to go through a few things today that will allow you to take advantage of forced isolation. That would be if you are self-isolating because you want to limit your contact with people, but that you are fit and you have no kind of uh, home work to do if you're not working from home, or if you've actually had the virus, which most people are recovering quite quickly from it, from what I'm gathering. I absolutely am not saying I, I am a an expert on viruses or anything like that, but I accept that people are maybe having to self-isolate for two weeks, but they are recovered in effect by the end of the first week. And that would allow you a week at home where perhaps if you feel fit enough, you could do some of the things that I'm going to suggest today. But with that said, I think the, the big thing we need to get over if we're to take advantage of this is our worry and our fear. Because remember the words of John Locke, he said, what worries you masters you and I've certainly felt that when I've been working on the podcast I had a lot to do this month and last week was pretty much a washout because of coronavirus related concerns and uh, things that I had to do to potentially prepare for it I wasn't a panic buyer I have to say but I did stop and make a couple of stews which I put in the freezer and I just had to make sure that friends and relatives and stuff were okay and that I could help them if necessary and it just meant that that about three of my five days of work last week were spent on kind of prepping for this situation and maybe understanding what we were going through and that distracted me away from what, what was my big priority this month which was completing season four of the podcast which I'm going to go on to a little bit later on today but Worry is is something that will absolutely paralyse you if you let it. The thing is, there's a couple of techniques you can use to maybe help you get by it. The one that comes to mind right off the bat is to create a worry period. That's like um, 15 minutes each day where you will only worry about kind of where you're at. Because not all worry is negative, of course. You can worry about things and realise, hmm, I could, well, do like what I did. I could make a stew and put it in the freezer and that way I would have a few meals if necessary. And I'm sure you could come up with a few other things that you could do as a result of this period you take to worry about things. Sit down, have a brain dump, let every, get all your thoughts onto paper and assess what's important, what's unimportant, and that will allow you to move on. If you have a worry list during your worry period, if the thoughts you write down are still bothering you then you can allow yourself to worry about them but only for the amount of time that you've specified in that worry period as you examine your worries in this way you'll often find it easier to develop a more balanced perspective and if your worries don't seem important anymore simply cut your worry period short and enjoy the rest of your day now what will come out of that brain dump will be two things one solvable worries and two not solvable, unsolvable <laughs> worries. There you go, you can tell it's unscripted. If a worry's solvable, you can start brainstorming it. You can make a list of possible solutions that you can think of. You can try not to get hung up too much as well on finding perfect solutions. You might find solutions which are good enough. And you can focus on the things that you've got the power to change rather than the circumstances or realities that are beyond your control. After you've evaluated your options, you can make a plan of action. And once you have a plan, and start, do, you can start doing something about whatever that problem is that you come across. But if the worry is not solvable, Just accept this uncertainty. Be stoic about the situation. Accept that some situations will occur which you will not be able to deal with. If if you're a chronic worrier, the vast majority of your anxious thoughts will probably fall into this camp. Worrying, though, is often a way we try to predict what the future has in store, a way to prevent unpleasant surprises and control the outcomes. 
And I'm not going to leave it there because I think there's a couple of other things you can do as well. You can, first and foremost, you can interrupt the worry cycle, is what they call it. If you worry excessively, it can seem like negative thoughts are running through your head on endless repeat. Uh, that sort of rumination thing that I've talked about in another episode. I don't know the episode number. Just go back and check it out. I'll put it in the show notes. But you might feel like you're spiralling out of control and going crazy or about to burn out under the weight of all this anxiety. But there are steps you can take right now to interrupt those anxious thoughts and give yourself a time out, as they call it, from relentless worrying. And that is get up and get moving. That will definitely break the circle. Go and have a walk. I'm lucky I've got a dog. I have to walk him, you know, four or five times a day. And therefore I have forced interruptions to whatever I'm doing, which can be a bit of a drag when I'm really into what I'm doing, but other times can just break up a kind of cycle of inactivity, shall we say. You can also, you know, meditate and practice deep breathing and things like that. These are other options for you, and there's plenty of information on the internet about that. And if you're stuck, of course, just talk about your worries. Build a strong support system um, with friends and and keep speaking to people. We've always got the phone. This is this age of technology. Even when isolated, we can be communicating and even building new friendships online. There's always opportunity for us to interact with others which of course is one of your five a day for good mental health which is let me just think about it it's another episode i think it's episode five which is alive which is stay active look about observe the world about you interact with others that's what i'm talking about just now volunteer volunteer your time even when you're isolated you can still help others. For example, I've got a neighbour who is elderly. I put my number through her door, said if she's in trouble, needs food or whatever, give me a call. I don't need to meet her. I can go and get her some food and leave it at her door. You know, I think maybe as long as we're not touching the same surfaces, so she might have to open the bag of food with a ba- with gloves or whatever. But, but you know, there are solutions uh, for, for everyone, and that volunteering is a good thing. I mean, I'm sitting here doing a podcast to try and help you guys as well. So there are things you can do even when you're restricted, that will help others as well. And uh, it's all part of that mindfulness thing that people talk about, you know. So that's enough about (laughs) worry. But I wanted to cover that kind of worry and fear thing because I think unless you tackle that, you're really not going to be able to do some of the things that I'm going to suggest today. Let's just go on with what my thoughts are. I've I've got four, maybe five specific things I've thought of what we can do with this time, this massive opportunity we've been handed. The first of which is to... Is what, did I finish my um, my um, alive my five a day for good mental health? The, the last part of that was educate, keep learning. We need to be learning in order to keep up in the competition of business, even creative business in the world that we're in. And my suggestion is that you go to Udemy or one of the similar platforms like Udemy. But Udemy dot com is a website that sells video courses and usually i don't know what price they're at at the moment let me just let me just check i'm just gonna log log in hold on oh bear with me typing um let's see yeah they've got so they've got a deal on right now they've got two days left on it this is this is going out on the 17th of march for the next two days you can get virtually every course on there for ten dollars ninety nine and a lot of the courses there are completely free incidentally i I record using a software called audacity which is a completely free audio recording software i also got a free course from udemy which was only 40 minutes long which went through the basics of audacity and i am recording right now i'm looking at it right now I learned how to use this software from a video course and now I'm using it every day because what you learn now makes your life easier in the future. What's that uh, Albert Einstein quote? Never regard study as a duty but as the enviable opportunity to learn and that's what this is. This forced isolation is an opportunity to learn. I'm doing a whole load of podcast related things but you could be learning a new language. You could be learning how to operate a camera, how to edit. You could be learning about productivity. You could be learning absolutely anything. And I suggest you go to udemy.com, check it out. How much hassle is it if you're sitting around doing nothing anyway? And this is something you could do year by year as well. But one thing I'd say about Udemy is these courses are, they can become addictive. Don't buy 20 courses. Don't worry that this sale is going to end in two days. This is a bit of a marketing thing they're doing. This sale comes around every couple of weeks. Courses generally are costing $10.99, but you might go on it after two or three days and you'll see that it's up at $100 or $200 or $1,000. 
two weeks, three weeks down the line, they'll be back down at ten dollars ninety nine. I've got like forty courses there. I don't have time to do forty courses though. I just have bought them over over time. And I try and chip away at them. I've got a rule now not to sign up for any more of them. But taking the opportunity to learn because you've got this restricted movement, this self-isolation is my first tip for uh, what to do in this opportunity. It's the first gift that we've got. And the second thing that you can do with your time if you are forced into isolation or you're choosing to isolate is that you can be preparing for life. Confucius said success depends upon previous preparation and without such preparation there is sure to be failure. This is an opportunity and it's the kind of point, one of the overriding points of the whole show is, and I, I talk about it in episode one, the very, very first show, to develop a sense of high level thinking it's uh, i try to get people to work on their life and career at the same time that they're living and working in it this forced pause to our life is an absolute gift and opportunity to the productivityist this is a time where you can stop and you can prepare for what is to come. And I would suggest you get a copy of Jenny Ditzler's book. I've mentioned it so often here, but it's it's true. It's called Your Best Year Yet. It costs like six ninety nine, seven pounds, something like that, on Amazon. I'll put a link to it again in the show notes. And I've done a couple of shows on it as well. The two previous New Year specials were on this very topic, and it's a brilliant system for planning your life and planning your year ahead and a year doesn't have to start on the 1st of January remember it can start on the day that you choose you can choose your first day of your new year to be I wouldn't suggest April the 1st because (laughs) um, that could get a little bit um, comical but it could be tomorrow it could be next week choose a day and make that be the start of the year that you're setting out In the final chapter, it asks you a series of questions. Basically, you do a self-assessment and then you've got to answer questions and set goals which you're going to live your life by. Because I'm living this year to my best year yet strategy. I'm working hard to make this work. It gives me very specific focus and it stops me going off in the wrong direction because that's the trouble because you're so caught up in life and work that you're making the wrong decisions. Although you might feel that they're right. The worst case scenario is that you find that you're living your life to achieve someone else's dreams and someone else's um, goals. That is a nightmare, but you might not realise you're doing it. And if you do a a self-assessment like this, you can spot things that you can get rid of that might even be friendships or people that you're you interact with you might get rid of that's like this sounds a little bit negative but you might find that some people are bringing you down you might find that you're bringing yourself down by just doing stuff which is not furthering your goals whether they be personal family or whatever or they be career wise or creativity wise another thing it does is it gets you to assess what's what's generally not worked for you and then create a new what, what she calls empowering paradigm which is a rule to live your life by over the following year and I think I've mentioned this in a previous episode but my new empowering paradigm was with time and effort and the cooperation of others I will be successful in all things it's kind of like an affirmation but this is one that I've molded for myself and the other thing is that I set myself 10 goals for the year 10 goals to achieve by the end of this year will I get them will I not I'm not so sure I reckon there's a couple of them I've already hit I reckon there's a couple of them I can foresee one to do with a, a wage that I won't hit, and I won't hit that one because of the coronavirus knocking out a number of my jobs. That's just one of the things that will happen. But if you've got a plan, you can navigate towards your goals. I heard a, I heard a version of this the other day, um, and I think it was something like, you can't hit an invisible target, you can't shoot an invisible target. So if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know what you're aiming at, you're never going to hit it. So prepping for life is an opportunity you've got now if you've got a week free just get into it grab that book listen to a couple of podcasts focus on where you're going make some decisions and that way when you go back to work when you when life reasserts itself which it will you'll be moving in a much more positive direction one little side thing that i've got here uh, i suppose it's kind of a third thing in the list is maybe this is an opportunity for you to sell some stuff every year every january i sell stuff I sell stuff I don't need. And last uh, April, I decided to give up on the filmmaking. I'm not saying I'll never go back to it, but I gave up on it. And I had some cameras and I had some computers and things like that, which I basically sold on in January there. So maybe this is an opportunity for you to get some stuff together you're no longer using 
get it onto Craigslist, get it onto Gumtree we've got in the UK, get it onto eBay and get it sold, even if you can't sell within this period because you're self-isolating because you've got uh, the, the virus and you're, or you're recovering from it. Getting your stuff together, selling it, will allow you some extra money perhaps to buy some new things or to put aside for a rainy day. This is the rainy day I've been preparing for. I've got some money put aside because I'm a freelancer and I've been freelancing for 25 years and I know that these times come. Did I know a virus was coming and going to potentially cancel most of the shooting in Scotland? Absolutely, I did not. But I was ready for the point where I broke my leg or I was ready for the point where maybe I... I was the guy that, that that didn't get hired this year, and they went for someone else. You know, I, I, this is this is the freelancer world. I, I was prepared for it. But one thing I did with my money, just to um, bring you up to date, is I, I raised some money in January from selling old stuff, and I'm recording now on a new piece of kit, which cost four hundred pounds or four hundred and fifteen, and that was buying it second hand, and that was kind of cost neutral to me because I sold some stuff I wasn't using and bought some stuff I am now using. So selling stuff is another thing you could be doing in this period, or at least preparing to sell it. And once you're out of that self-isolation phase, you've got the stuff photographed, you've got stuff organised, you've got the stuff descriptions of it, and then you can fire it out there. Selling stuff is a bit of a pain, but there's a little bit of additional money can be made there if you're not exactly rolling in it. Now, the third thing, which is a really big thing I want to talk about that you you can do in this period of forced isolation, is prepare your own projects. This is a massive gift again. Get that script written. Uh, get the script that you've written before out of the, whatever the file that you've got it in and start organising it, start preparing it to shoot. Is it a short film? Could you shoot it on not a lot? Go for it. Do you need to start a, a crowdfunding campaign? Get your crowdfunding campaign organised. Do you need to learn a little bit about marketing what you've done already and get it out there or complete a project? Get it done. This is a massive opportunity to prepare your projects. This is, for me, one of the biggest things that creative people can be doing. Leo Tolstoy said that spring is the time for plans and projects. We've got a spring forced upon us now that we can take advantage of. So if you've got a project which has been in the doldrums, then take this as an opportunity to do that. Remember the words of Benjamin Franklin, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Now, the last thing I want to say today is this is an opportunity to tidy up and clean your home and your workspace. And I want to talk about this. I was, I did, I did look for a quote about this, and I found a quote which was exactly right. This is how I look at my workspace, and I, I'm not always on top of it. But Jan Wenner said, "I'm a neat freak. It seems to me that an orderly desk is reflective of an orderly." and organised mind, unquote. And that's the way I look at, at my desk, my world, my house. Wherever you are, you may want to take this one week. And I, I organised my office also in January into February. I got rid of the system that I had set up. I was One of the things I did was sell computer equipment. I sold my main editing machine in the house, but I also bought a new machine. But I got rid of the editing screens and I set up some new screens. And I'm now working from a mostly clean desk. I'm saying mostly because, unfortunately, things keep coming in. I've got an organised desktop, however, so emails that come in which are pertinent to one thing or another go into folders that I've got organised in my Gmail folder. My Dropbox is especially organised as well. I was able to back up stuff onto another cloud solution, and it's Dropbox I, I use just because my clients use that quite often. So I've got a couple of shared folders on there, so I stick with that, but there obviously are a couple of other options for you, like what's the Google one? Uh, Google Drive, is that that what it is? I think it is. If it's not, I'm sure somebody will tell me. Um, But I was able to organise my desktop. Uh, My house is clean. I've been able to shove out a whole load of stuff which was a little bit tatty and buy a few things that are cleaner looking and feeling and I have actually genuinely cleaned loads and loads of stuff. The house is very, very clean at the moment and the reason I did all this is I think partly, I've got to be honest, is uh, (laughs) I was procrastinating. (laughs) But at the end of the procrastination, I now have this really pretty perfect working space and I can get stuff done. And so this might be another thing you should consider. And that was kind of the final kind of suggestion I had for if you've got a week, if you've got two weeks and you are self-isolating, then take it as a productivity gift and enjoy it. 
So that's enough for today. I'll go back and listen to this and see if it's nonsense, but I'll, I'll fire this out tonight. Um, I just want to thank a few of the sponsors who've already come on board for Season 4. That's Kelly Stark, Petra Kolb, Shipyard Shenanigans. Oh, by the way, Kelly and Petra are, are great on uh, the social networking as well. They're great to interact with and... I'm really, really appreciative of their support. The the next one I want to talk about, though, is Shipyard Shenanigans. This is my friend James Tiffany. He's done his own podcast, which is a drama podcast. It's a comedy podcast. If you're into Billy Conley, for example, this is something you'll probably really love. He's got a bunch of actors together. He's put a whole lot of his own money into it. He's put a whole lot of creativity into it, and he's built a podcast, a comedy podcast, and it is available now on pretty much all of the platforms that are out there. You'll certainly find it on iTunes and Spotify, for example, and I'm sure you'll find it on a few others as well. And a, his company is called Shug the Dog, but I've got a bunch of actors together. They've recorded in a studio. It's all been mixed, and it's firing out now. He's got at least four episodes out at the moment, and I think he's either at the moment or about to release one per week. And also, he's sponsored a good few episodes of the next season, so I just wanted to mention him there. There's also a sponsor, it's a feature film called Juvenile Delinquents and it's in cinemas in the US right now and it's coming soon to the UK. That's also one of my sponsors for season four. And I think I've got a couple of others as well but they're still kind of um, slightly slightly floating. Uh, what I can say is that at least three episodes are still looking for sponsors so if you're interested in sponsoring uh, one of the shows in season Eight, no, not season eight. What is it? Season four. Then give me a shout. You can drop me a line. I've actually put it on the um, website on filmproproductivity.com. There is a, a section just for sponsors, but you can email me uh, filmproproductivity at gmail.com if you're interested in backing a show. And it would be along the lines of this episode is sponsored by, insert your words here. Now, not, not 400 words, but, you know, like 10 words promoting your show for example this episode is sponsored by juvenile delinquents in cinemas in the usa right now and coming soon to the uk that would be the sort of thing and then the music would kick in and all of the money that's raised from these sponsorships goes directly into promotion and i'm still putting the show together so i've not yet started on it but i will have a promotional strategy i will be spending money on a various different ads i'll be t- doing some test ads and then i'll be focusing some money on perhaps uh, i'm not sure which platform it could be twitter it could be facebook it could be even be something like linkedin but i'm going to try and focus the money to try and see if i can get more listeners uh, the, the other thing that you can do to help me get more listeners is keep spreading the word about the show and i, I tell you there's a specific thing you can do as well is if you screen grab this show from the app that you're listening to it in right now and put that on social networking with a link or with just a kind of something saying you know go to itunes and get it i've got links everywhere for the uh for the show then that would be really useful as well that um leaving reviews all that sort of stuff is very very helpful finally i want to say that there's going to be a slight delay to season four really because of the coronavirus thing. It's one of the reasons I wanted to do this episode as well. I'm going to postpone it by two weeks, so it's going to go out... Hold on, I better double-check this. Um, It was due to go out on the 29th, which is a couple of weeks from now. It's now going to launch on the 12th of April. That's just a decision that I've made. My um, work situation is changing rapidly. I've had to do a few things which have um, put me back and... I think largely what the problem was that is my mind had to focus on other things. It wasn't I didn't have enough time, it's just I didn't have enough uh, focus to get these episodes together. And I've had a slight problem in, in pinning down guests as well because of this problem, but I am getting there. So the uh, show now, uh, season four, will launch on the 12th of April instead of the 29th of March. So stand by for that one. And I think that's probably about it, to be honest. I, I'm not going to give any advice on the actual <laughs> on the actual coronavirus because I know nothing particularly about it, which is which is true. The one thing I did look up, which is is that if you've got it and you need to walk your dog, that's okay. The one thing you've got to watch out for there is um, not letting people pet your dog. Obviously, not getting too close to other people, but dogs, although they're not uh, carriers of it, kind of are in another way because they are a surface like you might touch a surface and someone might touch that surface and it could transfer the virus. Someone petting your dog, clapping your dog, as we'd say in the UK, 
um, could pick the virus up just from touching the dog. So that, that's my only bit of advice, and that's because I really, really researched it yesterday. Uh, other than that, I know nothing about it. All I can say is if you can help others in your in, in this time of need, if you're fit enough, you know, remember that the words of is Al, Albert Schweitzer. I saw this earlier. It's something like, um, even if it is a little thing, do something for those who have need of help. And I'm sure you can do that for someone. So try and take care of uh, the elderly, perhaps, that are in your uh, vicinity. You can do it, as I said earlier, without um, actually face-to-face contact, just offering to, to help them out, getting them some food or whatever, and maybe just leaving it them uh, leaving it at their door, for example. That may be a good thing you can do, but it's completely, completely up to you. Today, I'm going to end, though, with the words of Les Brown. He said, Whatever life may send your way, make the best of it. Don't waste your time and energy worrying about it. Instead, find a way to do something about it. Learn from it. Adjust to it. Be strong. Be flexible. And be your best in every situation. Now take control of your own destiny. Keep on shooting. And join me next time on Film Pro Productivity and Success. The music that you are listening to right now is Adventures by Ehumitsu. You can view the show notes for this episode on the official website, filmproproductivity.com. You can follow my personal account on Twitter and Instagram at fight underscore director or follow the show on Twitter at filmproprodpod or on Facebook at filmproproductivity. Please support the show by subscribing, spreading the word and leaving an awesome review.